The Charleston Tug is actually one of my favorite wrecks to go and check out in South Carolina. This is a 130 foot long tug that they sunk about 10 miles off the coast uh, from North Myrtle Beach. And she sits in about 65 feet of water, pretty much upright, and on a good day you can actually see it from the surface because the wheelhouse of the vessel is only about 30 feet below the surface. But it's especially nice today that we're out here because I'm with my daughter, Abby. She's a newly certified diver, and this is one of her first saltwater, open water dives. As we make our way down, though, we're, uh, we're definitely not alone. We're going to have a little company with us here in a moment. There he is, one of the usual barracudas that hang out on these wrecks. I had forgotten and I left the light for my camera on as we were making our descent. And anything that shines a light or is reflective, these guys are all about that. They're very, very curious animals. And in this case, he also seems to be in need of a little belly scratch. We're making our way down, the water conditions are remarkably clear. Uh, we're still a little bit over the, uh, the superstructure of the vessel, but it's, it's clearly visible. And as we, we make our way down to the bow, we're going to move along the port side of the vessel. It's been submerged for about, I guess, three or four years, give or take. Uh, so there's a lot of marine growth that's already established itself on here. A lot of soft corals, sponges. Uh, and as you can see, when we get close and the light hits it, you can actually see the, uh, the colors of some of this. Uh, unfortunately, one of the first casualties uh, when you move down the water column, uh, as soon as you're below about 25, 30 feet, all the reds and the yellows tend to disappear unless you actually light them up with an artificial light source. About the only thing left are the, uh, the greens and the blues. little damselfish here. I always love seeing these guys because once they establish a little residence in some pocket of the, one of the wrecks, you can go back days, even weeks later. They'll still be there. It's, it's like they picked out a little house. They just never seem to leave it. Now we're making our way down along the, uh, the port side of the vessel and we're going to start moving toward the stern here in a few seconds. First, I wanted to look at that pocket, though. I always loved seeing all those corals growing on a vessel like this because it's a sign of a pretty healthy ecosystem when you have this kind of marine growth, you know, that's showing up. Um, the water quality is obviously pretty good. And just generally a really positive sign for the purpose of having this vessel here in the first place, which is to establish a reef, because if you move out and away from the vessel and you're just out on the sand, there's very little that you're going to see. It's almost like a desert out there. Uh, but around the, around the superstructure itself, there's lots of marine life. And here we go. We're coming up on the stern. This is the, uh, the four-bladed screw on the vessel uh, that we're in front of right now. And we're kind of in the shade from the, uh, the hull itself, uh, since we're under the, uh, the aft section. Not sure what I was thinking when I zoomed in on that. It's some sort of little invertebrate sitting there on the bottom. Never could figure out what that was. We 
We have the usual little pinfish sitting around. And you can see one of these uh, sunken cement pipes that they have strewn about the wreck. That's another uh, add-on that they did to the uh, the artificial reef. It gives a little bit more cover for the fish. And then we've got an angel fish over here. Those are always pretty to see. You'll see more of those as, uh, as the video goes on. I have to admit, I have kind of a fault when it comes to diving. I get very caught up in looking at these fish. Especially these guys. I'm not sure what they are. There's something, I believe, in the drum family, just based on the body shape. And they're kind of dark colored, but they have a beautiful iridescence about them. And so I always enjoy seeing them on these wrecks. They're, they're all over the place. But, as you can see, Abby's standing there waiting for me, patiently I might add, to get done taking these, uh, these shots. And now we're going to start making our way up the starboard side of the wreck. The hatchways on this particular vessel are fairly narrow. And the way I'm configured today, I have my tank uh, strapped to my back instead of in a side configuration, so I'm not going to try to go inside the wreck. But I can at least move the camera housing in there. As you can see, if you look down toward the bottom, that's the actual engine block that they left in place. There's Steve, one of our fellow divers, with us today. And Abby again. remember correctly, in this chamber, yeah, there's quite a few angelfish hanging out in here. It's always nice when you can catch a shot of them and they're, they're not busily heading somewhere. And then I was actually surprised on the outside of the wreck we ran into a school of them here. I never get tired of seeing these guys. They're just plain pretty. We're making our way toward the bow of the vessel right now, and we're down kind of low on it. So we're at about, oh, 65 feet or so here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make our way around onto the port side of the vessel and go and take a look at a couple more of those uh, cement pipes that were sunk and some of the life that's inside those. Abby's leading the way as usual, with me bringing up the rear. It's 
not a huge amount of room in these pipes, but you can typically get through without too much difficulty, even with the tank strapped to your back. Beautiful purple sponges there. There's Abby. A little further out from the wreck, they also have some sunken armored personnel carriers. I don't think we're going to try to do get out to those on this particular dive. Um, just a little bit too far, and we're kind of keeping track of our bottom time because we'd done two other dives prior to this and so we had a good surface interval but we're still limiting our time a little bit on these dives. If you look carefully on the bottom there, you see that line over toward the left part of the uh, picture. They actually <clears throat> left these lines in place to kind of guide you out towards some of the, uh, the sites that are a little remote from the tug itself, and so they just left them right on the sand bottom. It's kind of helpful, you know, especially if you have a day where it's not as nice as today and the visibility isn't quite as good. You can sort of feel your way along with those. Even here, though, a little bit away from the main part of the uh, the reef, you know, na namely the tug itself, the fish just take up residence on these pipes. They love having this cover. These guys are kind of unusual looking. They're called cowfish. They're part of the triggerfish family. And you don't see them as frequently as some of the other species, but uh, they're still fairly consistent residents on these sites. It's worth noting, when we got in the water on this dive, one of the things that I noticed was that the water was reasonably cool, even though the air temperature was very, very warm. Um, I think what may have happened that gave us the water clarity that we have here on this trip is that we had a little bit of upwelling taking place. Um, the winds had been blowing um, actually from the shore outward for a little while before this trip, and so when that happens, you get this 
upwelling phenomenon that takes place. It draws cooler water in from the deeper parts of the uh, surrounding ocean, and that's there to replace the surface level water that's been blown further offshore, uh, which is usually a little warmer. But when it does that, it brings a lot more clarity. There's a wrasse right there. I love seeing those guys. They're really neat, kind of playful fish. They'll actually uh, stick around with you and swim circles around you when you, uh, when you spend a little time in one place. And there's some more of these drum that I was talking about earlier. At least I think they're drum. Now this I was not expecting us to find out here. A starfish sitting on the bottom. Usually you find these guys a lot further inshore. But, for whatever reason, this fellow made his way out here. And, kind of neat to find. You know, something you usually find on the beach after they've already died. But, uh, in this case, he was very much alive. At this point, we start to make our way back a little bit toward the uh, the main part of the reef. In other words, the hull of the tug itself. But overall, this this was a really nice dive. Conditions, frankly, you couldn't have asked for better on a day like this. We did find one last artifact, a scallop shell of all things. I always love finding those because usually the ones I find on the beach are busted up. 